Based on what you've learned so far, what's your advice to younger actors who are following in your footsteps? Maybe they came from a little pond and now they're coming to LA and they realize there could be stereotypes, maybe there's not, but they're up against a big pool of people being here in LA. I feel like at this point in my life, um, I'm 25 years old, like you have to do it now. Like you have to pursue it. Like if you don't, then you're gonna wait and you're gonna fall into the same trap that a lot of people do where they get comfortable in their jobs and they you know, forget about your passion. If, you're, if, arts, if the artists are your passion, then you need to pursue it. You know, if it doesn't work, then it doesn't work. At least you know that you gave it a shot. I mean, coming here, you have to like be comfortable in yourself. You have to be comfortable in yourself and your abilities and like go to any every casting that you feel that you fit and hope that someone likes you. And if they don't like you, maybe they can suggest you to someone else that will like you. Like I've been to only like a few castings here so far but in those castings, I've networked with people and I've landed other auditions. Or I've been to like I've been out at like a party and I've landed another audition. Because you have to just network. You, it's, this industry, especially in LA, is so much about networking. I read an article about the power of a referral. Like I wouldn't have known about that audition if I didn't talk to that guy at that party. You know what I mean? So it's like getting to know people and just following your dreams. Like I, the trip here was. I can get into the, the entire trip here was just like a nightmare. Um, just like the, the process of getting here and like, you know, here getting to LA and trying to find a place and like trying to find an agent. It's just such a hard battle. But I know that when I'm done, I'm going to have a story and I'm going to be really proud of it. And I'm going to be very happy that I did it. So I say go for it. When it comes to an MFA in acting, in whatever field, because I pursued an MFA in acting for film. Um, where all my five years of college were in theater and before that all my training was in theater in classical theater my my advice would be to every young girl or every woman that wants to go for an MFA get an education before that in your field I can't tell you how many women will walk into an MFA acting program and come from a completely different background from a completely different education that hurt women more than somebody telling them get breast implants or lose weight or anything. That hurt women more because they walked into a world they had no shields for. They had no protection. They walked into a world that said, oh, now you have to stand with all your emotions naked on stage. Good luck with that. And you're asking a woman that came from the corporate world, that came from being a mother, that came from chemistry. That came, I mean, women that they're used to be heady, all of a sudden you're asking them to put their emotions out on stage. That hurt them more than somebody telling them get breast implants or lose weight. Why? Because somebody would tell them that in the actual outside world too, not just in the theater Hollywood world. They had men tell them things like that and they'll brush them off. In this industry, women, we somehow learn to walk past those things even if the, that split of a second they will hurt. We learn to walk past them. But if you're trying to make a career, out of being emotionally raw on stage or in front of the camera and you have no training behind that, that will scar you for life. And I've seen, I've seen classmates of mine get out of grad school and never do, never pursue this industry, never even signed up. With, they had that package in their hands. They walked out, they dropped it in the trash and move on in life because they weren't prepared. They didn't have the five years of training that I had and I walked in being like, I'm gonna walk out of that and I'm gonna be ready to work. This is just another stage in my career. It's not my career. Does that make sense? For them, it was the end of the road. Grad school was the end of the road. That was sad. And so they, the, all the money they paid, student yeah. loans, everything. They, now it's just a student loan and I'm speaking for specific people that, that I know. And yeah, that was the end of the road for them. Some moved on to become make artists. Some moved on to Nothing at all. Some moved on to just having families and kids and not pursuing this business ever again. Because grad school was a scarring experience. It, it was hard. It's not just going to class every day like any other school that you have to write 10 pages of papers. You're on stage in front of the camera 24-7. Literally. Every day you have to be makeup and camera ready. And you have that casting director professor behind that camera saying, you're not gonna get the leading lady because you're fat in the real world. But here, yeah, sure, here, why not? 
for me, it comes down to, am I willing to live with the rest of my life where people are like, hey, you're that black girl that was like that? Or did I, and do I connect with that, uh, that character? That's what it comes down to. Because honestly, money comes and goes. It does, but it's my happiness and how do I feel about myself? That's more important to me. What can you really do that's not like the, if, you're, if, you're, if you have a regular job, that's fun, it's interesting, but you will never experience the same thing you experience when you're in a creative environment, when you're putting together a play or putting together a, a documentary or acting in a movie, you don't get that feeling. And, that, and that's why people who are, in, are actors, they live in their 80s and 90s because they're having so much fun. You know, they're open, they're, they're opening themselves to everything. You know, you're putting, you put in situations that you've never been in before and it's, it's like a light comes on when you get it, when you know you nailed it. You know, it, it, it's great. It's just, it's just, I can't explain it. It's, if you're talking to someone who does plays or whatever, you can really, they understand what, what you're talking about. If you do a play when you leave, you're so jacked up. I mean, you're like in another world. It's like, you're so high, you know, but you can't, unless someone experiences that, they can't really know what it feels like. She said, Mark, you're a bit lazy and a little bit afraid bit lazy and a little bit afraid. The flip side of the coin, and I'm going to go segue many years after the fact, I had the pleasure of working in Steven Spielberg's Hook as a pirate. That was 1991, a lot of years, chronological years, but he interviewed all the pirates himself, one-on-one. -on -one. I submitted through Drama Log, got called in. I was non-union at the time, background. I did some voices and accents, and he just looked at me and said, you got a lot of guts. So from the flip side, you got a lot of guts. And throughout the years, Karen, uh, I've a attempted to, to work out of that laziness, out of that laziness and that, and that fear, but, and, and have a life as well, work regular jobs and, and, and so forth and so on. But I can always, but I say that to say there's always room to, to even work more out of the laziness and the, the being afraid, the fear of success. Even in regular life, outside of acting, I just wish that people could get along and that people could see each other just past the skin. Because if we all peeled our skin off, we would just be the same. You couldn't tell at all who we were. Um, I think if people, the, the case in point with Saturday Night Live, for instance, when they were uh, not forced, but just c compelled to bring on African Americans and just, they still need to bring on Latina actors and stuff, but that is a great example of how the show was enriched because of these different perspectives. Um, even the show Orange is the New Black, look at all those beautiful women and they're all different and people love that show. I think if people would realize the executives, maybe the powers that be, that these kind of things work when there's, when you don't see the shade of the skin, it's just different characters. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need to do and I think it would be successful money-wise, oddly enough, <laughs> and also creatively as yes. well. Right. <laughs> I remember this history course in, in college and the history teacher, first day of class, came out and said, all right, I want all of you to pull out a piece of paper and pencil and, and write the name of your hero. We're going to spend the next you know, 12 weeks writing a story, a history story. So before we start, decide on you who your hero is, and I'll be right back. And so the professor leaves the classroom, and everyone's got their pen and pencil and, and paper, and they're jotting a name down, you know. And he comes back, and the class was about like 56, 57 kids, you know. And the teacher comes back and, and, and collects all the paper, and he's going through it. And out of the 50, I remember out of the 56, 57 kids, he only saw four female names, right? So even the women in the room were writing men as their heroes. And so he only saw like four, three or four female names. And out of all of them, there was maybe like one or two whose names were, you know, ethnic. The rest of them were like, you know, Harrison Ford or you know, Panama Jack or, you know, something kind of like iconic, you know, and 
Bruce Wayne, you know, or whatever, you know. Um, and so I think that has a lot to do with the way we grow up. We grow up, we're watching Clark Kent. We're listening to Bruce Wayne and, and, and Peter Parker. And these are really kind of like apple pie American names for heroes, you know. And, and they're men, you know, and they're square jawed and they're kind of like tough and they're not. And so that comes into how we grow up. And when we get into a position of reimagining our stories, we basically regurgitate what we've eaten all these years without thinking about it, you know? And even as a minority uh, a writer, when I've written, I've had to really mindfully say, well, does it have to be a guy? Does it have to be white, you know? Does it even have to be Asian, you know? So I think even before we get into the casting room about your question, sometimes it has to do with, from the writer, you know, how you kind of make the source material, if you make it kind of really interesting, it almost gives everyone else permission to make it more interesting. If someone insults me mm -hmm. and they're not apologetic, if they're having a bad day, uh, obviously some people have bad days and you have to figure out how to communicate with that person. But if someone is insulting you and someone is treating you, being abrasive with you, and you say, listen, you know, can we talk? You know, are you having a bad day? You know. I just feel, I don't know if maybe you're having a bad day and you're not really focused today that you're uh, being aggressive towards me. Am I, am I, is there a problem between us? And try and, try and figure out a way to figure it out because we're humans, we all do the same things. We just do it differently. So I want to find out, well, well, how can we work together? And if we can't, obviously, you know, you just can't work with that person, but if you, Take that time out to try and resolve it. Nine times out of ten, you will be able to resolve it. One, you're there for a reason. They have a project. They want to complete it. And if you say, well, I don't want to be in this project, that's a problem. So they want you to stay there. I mean, they want you to work with you. So, but most of the time, I, I, I don't have that kind of problem. I feel that, you know, I can communicate well with people and I don't really, I don't really feel that that's going to end everything. But obviously, if it's just so unbelievably terrible and you can't resolve it, there's no way you can make turning a, a negative into a positive, you know, it's obviously you just can't, you can't work with that person. In the beginning, it was more like, Wow, maybe I'm I'm very I'm too aggressive. Maybe I'm too passionate. Maybe I'm too. But see, that's the way I am. That's the way I was brought up to. That's the that that's that's me. That's who I am. And so instead of diminishing that, instead of you know kind of you know putting yourself in a you know kind of like a, in the fetal position, you know, uh, and say you know I'm not going to do that, you know, go ahead and do that. Tackle that. You know, I, I, I tell myself, you embrace that, take that in and do the best that you can, you know, with that particular role. I guess by, by putting myself out there, which is a very vulnerable place to be in, but I do think that if you, if you have a dream and you pursue it and you're 100% committed to that dream, um, I think you can manage anything. And that's the hope I have right now is just to get out there, to be seen, to take my acting classes, to get to know people, to do as much work as I can and then, you know, maybe someday write my own things so I can give myself the roles I know I can play and then through that kind of, you know, spread out and, you know, let people know that I'm more than what I seem to be. You have to stay true to yourself, you know, know who you are, you know, no one can tell you who you are, no manager, no agent, no huge Hollywood production, you have to honestly know who you are as a person. And if you know who you are as a person, you're going to just excel and go the furthest of the far. You know, you, you just stay focused, do what you have to do. But once again, the, 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 the main part to the, to the success is knowing who you are, staying true to it. And if you don't fold and, and break yourself, you're going to excel. You're going to go far. You're going to do great things in life. You know, no one will be able to stop you because you know in your mind, you know in your heart. I can do this, you know. It's not going to be easy, you know, but anything, you know, worth fighting for is totally worth having. You know, my grandmother tells me that all the time, you know. 
easy come, easy goes. But those things that you work your ass off for and, and you go hard for, trust you will see some type of just vital, just improvement somewhere down the line. And and you will, you know, take on challenges that you never thought you can take on. But once again, you know who you are, so you know you can take on those challenges. I would say start with your history. That's what I would say. Because um, if you know specifically when it comes to African Americans, because oftentimes people tend to erase that really big chunk of American history called slavery, <laughs> and then the Jim Crow era, and then the civil rights, you know, all of that. So I think knowing your history um, would really, really uh, anchor you because we're resilient and so often we had to create our own reality because of the levels of oppression and brutality just which we're seeing now you know history is sadly repeating itself in some ways things have gotten so things have gotten better in some ways and it's gotten worse in some ways and i would think finding um artists outside of hollywood who inspire it could be a teacher, it could be someone in your family, it could be someone on Broadway. But I think sometimes with the glitz and glamour of Hollywood, we forget that these are real people. And um, there are like these light bulb moments like, oh my God, you know? So I think history um, definitely working, like training, like knowing your craft. B. Richards, there's a book, Lisa Gay Hamilton, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, A Black Woman Speak. I think every, every person on this planet, especially every actress, not only African-American actresses, but especially African-American actresses should see that film because I watched it and I cried like a baby because I said, oh goodness, you can survive and you can thrive even without being a household name. You can create these wonderful opportunities for you, for yourself. And I was looking at someone like B, and I'm thinking, wow. Um, so, I mean, I, there's no one answer, but I think that's what has helped me, uh, anchor me, um, knowing who I am, um, not apologizing for myself, self-love, because a lot of people are attracted to um, the entertainment industry, a lot of broken people are. That instant gratification, you wanna be famous, you wanna prove something to your family members who said you would never make it. You, you know, there are all these reasons why people flock to a city like this and, and New York and everywhere, um, but specifically cities like this. And I, and I would say, uh, if you don't know who you are, learn who you are. Because something I told my students, I don't want you to just be the most amazing actress or actor. I want you to be an amazing human being because when the lights fade and there is no applause, you have to be okay with who you are and you have to be okay with the choices you made. And that does not mean that I don't have moments of doubt. That does not mean that I don't have moments of fear. That does not mean that I don't feel some type of way when I see other actors getting roles that I turn down and, you know, possibly making more money than me. Um, but I'm clear about my mission. And when you're clear about your mission and when you know that this is your true calling, nothing can stop you. Not a racist um, casting post, not a misogynistic filmmaker who wants to put you in a box when you're on set, not a PA who comes up to you talking about girlfriend, you know, the stereotypes. It's a good journey, you know? And that's why I'm excited to do this because even saying this, like I'm saying it to you all, but I'm saying it to myself as well, to keep, to keep pressing forward. But I do know it to be true that you can thrive if you want to. And part of that is not being so desperate. There's a level of like hunger you need, you know, um, to make you, you know, it pushes you, but, that desperation where you want to do every single thing, mm -mm. you have choices and it's powerful. And I feel empowered because I activate my power to say no.
Do I always do I always do it? No, but I try very hard to um, not say yes to things that don't feel well, even if it pays well. And for that reason, I feel like I'm in my own lane. <laughs> I do. I feel like I'm in my own lane, and I'm grateful. So that's it. Ha <laughs>